Rock, one of the unproblematic faves of YouTube. He was born Bretman Rock Skakanyan Laforga, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and was born on July 31st, 1998 in the Philippines. His father, Edmund, was a fan of professional wrestling and named him after Bret Hart and The Rock. Bretman Rock moved to Hawaii at the age of seven and played sports while growing up, including basketball, soccer, cross country, and volleyball. At Campbell High School, Rock was in the track team. Now, Bretman Rock's career on social media started with Vine, as he started his career as like a Vine comedian, basically telling his jokes and his stories through the medium of six second videos before transitioning over to YouTube when Vine finally ended. Not only was he known for his skits, but he was also known for his amazing beauty skills that people took notice of in 2007. 16 and 17. That's where he kind of transitioned himself into somewhat of a well-known and prominent beauty influencer. I'd probably consider Bretman Rock one of the top 10 beauty influencers of the 2016s to 2019. In 2016, one of Bretman Rock's contouring videos went viral. He was inspired to create this video by fellow content creator Talia Joy as as well as Patrick Starr. However, around 2019, Bretman Rock's style of content somewhat drifted into less about beauty and makeup and, you know, professional MUA style filming and more so into who he was as an individual and his character. He would frequently, even from the Vine days, feature his sister Princess as well as her daughter Cleo. They would do videos together such as mukbangs as well as challenges and he even had a whole entire show inspired by the idea of just doing random scientific experiments in his home. Hey guys, it's Bretman Rock and you're watching another episode of Bretman the Science. Bitch, 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 Bretman the Science. Bitch. This was somewhat new in terms of the beauty community and the beauty space because Bretman was able to transcend beauty and become known for who he was as a person. It wasn't his tutorials that were particularly inspiring. It was his freedom of speech, his flamboyancy in the way that it was that he spoke and his uninhibited nature that drew his audience closer to him. So despite even in 2020, collaborating with the likes of Nikita Dragon, Jeffree Star, uh, Glam and Gore, as well as Nikki Tutorials and some others, he still had that ability to dip into the beauty community and then back out. However, more recently, the reason that Bretman Rock has been on the names of so many different drama channels in the past week is for a video it is that he did with a company called Them, where he spoke about his life, growing up, his lifestyle, his confidence, and all of the things that make Bretman Rock rock and that have subsequently landed him his own show on MTV. But he said one thing in particular that seemed to have riled up a lot of people. This is what Bretman Rock had to say. And it's because I don't want to be tied with the beauty community anymore. I'm not a beauty guru. Girl, now this video. The girls were not happy with this video. Ultimately, I said what I said, and I meant what I said. White people ruin the beauty community, and I'm a go. Bitch, it was like, ugh. How are y'all do not even know how to apologize? It's as simple as addressing what you did, saying sorry, and never doing it again. But you bitches are gonna cry, make up excuses, not say sorry, and still do the shit you say. Now initially, when I first saw this from the drama channels all across social media, I didn't really think anything of it. I mean, Bretman Rock really just didn't want to be a part of that community. And the beauty community as a whole has been tainted not only by the biggest players, your Jaclyn Hills, your Jeffree Stars, your James Charleses, etc., etc. It's also been tainted by the money 
hungry, grabby nature of all of these individuals, as well as just simply nobody cares about beauty in the same way that they did before. But the thing is, is that Bretman Rock was essentially upset at the lack of accountability. So when I took a look on Twitter, I was absolutely flabbergasted by the amount of black people POC alike who were saying that there was a massive lack of accountability from Bretman Rock and that in fact his statements alone were extremely tone deaf. It seems as if Bretman Rock has not only had to apologize for, but has been the perpetrator of microaggressions towards the African-American community at large. They see him to be perpetuating the trope of the angry black woman, as well as in numerous times in the past being caught, whilst I will say as a minor, saying the N-word, over and over again and the more i started thinking about this i started thinking yeah he does exhibit you know ebonics and keep saying things in aave and yeah that is an indicative of his heritage and his upbringing and where he came from and why has he decided to do this? Is it for money? Is it to put on this quote unquote costume in order to take it off at the end of the night? Or is it something that he's doing unintentionally that has somehow turned into this massive thing that the black community and the POC community want him to be held accountable for? So, so this led me down a very dark and dangerous road where I researched and researched and researched Bretman Rock so much to the point that I researched myself into empathy. I started this video with the idea that Bretman Rock was appropriating a culture and should be condemned. And I left after my research, and this is very important why people should start doing their own independent research, I left after my research actually feeling empathetic to what it could be like as an individual who is displaced from a community that isn't their own and has to not appropriate but assimilate another culture as a means of survival. So with that being said, let's take a look at the many black faces of Bretman Rock. Hi guys, what is up, what is good, what is Gucci? It is your girl Paige Christy here bringing you yet another video. Before I started today's video, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to all of you who basically took part in last week's discussion. I know it was a very difficult conversation to have, especially as it pertains to the trans and non-binary communities. And I know that there are a lot of people who have a lot of apprehension around discussing these topics. And I'm just so happy that we were able to foster an environment where we could have constructive critique and good conversations and dialogues with each other. So I just really appreciate all of you, for the most part, for being on your best behavior. So with that being said, thank you again for the support on last week's video and let's get straight into today's video. Okay, so this entire situation started from a tweet. This tweet was made by a person called Zartana and it says, the way that Bretman Rock talks in his interviews is is hilarious to me. So then after I had a look at this video, I decided to take a look at what it was that people were saying in the quote tweets. And I was actually like super surprised to see how many people of color took issue with Bretman Rock. So this is what some of the tweets had to say. So one of the tweets says, the way y'all call black women ghetto, but love non-black people, especially the LGBT plus for emulating black women and AAVE. Non-black gay men love of using the black scent child. They call us ghetto and they say, y'all got attitudes if we talk like this. When non-black people talk like this, who's the only group against it? Question mark. Black people, the same group of people, women, they stole it from, yet they are never pressed for their attitudes or being ghetto. Someone in the comments mentioned his very obvious black scent and folks are breaking their necks, trying to defend it, saying that this is how queer Asians talk. It's 2023 and we still have to remind y'all that so many gays get their entire aesthetic from black women. 
it's a black scent. White people ruined the beauty community. These POC personalities always love to throw white people under the bus to sound woke, but they, POC, also ruined the community by gentrifying AAVE and playing the sassy black woman trope whilst benefiting from colorism. And literally, if you go to this tweet, I will leave a link to this tweet in the description box down below. You can see that the black community at large seem to have a massive problem with this. So this brought me to a completely different place of AAVE and, you know, gay talk or Gen Z talk. I feel like it's a very fine line between calling genuinely calling out a creator that's using aave or the black scent f for like a, like putting it on for comedic purposes versus like quoting something you know what i mean like the Nicki minaj thing a big booze chow anyways like that's a meme obviously so when someone's quoting that or when someone says like period sis whatever snatch all that that it's very much like internet culture like stan twitter like stan culture has its own language and it's such a fine line between like you make these friends online and that's how you speak within these online communities and then you know as a creator versus just a normal person on twitter saying it out loud as you would with your friends it's very different when it's kind of like collectively as a generation this is how we all if you're on the internet this is kind of how we all speak because it seems that over the past couple of years, AAVE, which I have discussed in a previous video, which is African American Vernacular English, is a dialectal format of English in the same way there is Indian English, Canadian English, American English, British English, Australian English. There are various different dialectal formatted ways of speaking in English. The only thing is, is that when it comes to AAVE, that is a specific dialect that has been created and used by African Americans when they were essentially uprooted from their homelands and placed somewhere, displaced if you will, in a place that wasn't their own and they had to adapt to one of the most brutally disgusting things that has ever happened in history. So essentially AAVE was used as a survival mechanism for a way that black slaves could speak to their masters, for a way that black slaves were able to communicate with each each other and also as a way for them to be understood because we also have to remember that in these times in the 1800s etc etc so many black people were denied education were denied the ability to even learn English in the conventional way that one would learn English but when we think about AAVE we also think about how AAVE has somewhat changed over the years. Ebonics isn't used in the same way that it was before. A lot of non-black people use Ebonics. And one of these communities was primarily the gay slash LGBTQIA plus community. Ebonics or AAVE was used a lot within the ball scene because the ball scene was primarily full of black African American individuals trying to bend gender and stereotype. There are a lot of words that come from that area of time for instance one word that a lot of people seem to have an issue with now which is serving fish is the gay slang term for serving woman for serving biological woman them was something to aspire to in the ball scenes of the early 1970s and 1980s and even 1990s the realness category if a guy walks realness and i'm not talking about heterosexual community i'm talking about a gay man, I'm not supposed to be able to clock that you're in the lifestyle. Categories like realness was a way to say, okay, can you go get food for the house? Because we can't get a job. So if, unless someone's real enough to be able to keep a nine to five, we don't have enough food to be able to pay illegally for people to survive to the next ball. A part of the ballroom scene, that is a huge scale of vernacular that is used within it. That is truly hilarious. I love when they say, they use terms like, that is fierce, honey, and not in the good way, but in a way that that needs to be fixed up or 
is my favorite of them all because it means you are over and over too. It means you are slaying. They are synonymous towards each other. It's just fire energy. I love the vernacular that it all brings. And terms such as serving fish and realness or even just serving in general are all terms that we see from programs like RuPaul's Drag Race because RuPaul's Drag Race is now a show that has been mainstreamized. So a lot of people growing up, specifically Gen Z in individuals are now watching people who are gay from all racial demographics using these terms. So to Gen Z and other people within the gay community, Ebonics isn't seen as Ebonics, it's seen as gay slang, gay talk. Now we've had this discussion before, the fact that when a non-black individual says terms in AAVE or BBE, which is British Black English, or just just any dialectal form of Ebonics, that it undermines the cultural significance of this language. Again, because it's a powerful dialect that has stemmed from our Black American ancestors who have had to adapt whilst experiencing a struggled environment through the American oppression. Without getting too theoretical, it's a nuanced adaptation of maintaining a unified culture separate to the white American culture and separate from the Euro-American manuscript. And the biggest problem that we see when non-black individuals use AAVE or Ebonics is them not using it appropriately or misunderstanding the terms or just using it in a way that just simply doesn't make any sense. Because native speakers of Ebonics know exactly what it is that we are saying to each other and the way that sentence structure has to be in order to make sense, a non-black individual will try and say something that just simply doesn't make sense. And this is where I found it interesting that somebody had picked up that Brand's use of AAVE, even in this interview, structurally, doesn't make sense. Bretman Rock said, how are y'all do not even know how to apologize? Ugh, how are y'all do not even know how to apologize? That's not Ebonics, that's not AAVE, that sentence doesn't make sense. Now this shows me that AAVE and Ebonics is just so complex that you just can't get it without being amongst it. So that made me question, has Bretman Rock ever been culturalized by black people? Now we all know the story. Non-black person gets culturalized by black people by living in proximity to black people. A valid example of a non-black person being culturalized by black people is somebody like Fat Joe, the rapper. He grew up in Queens, New York, and because of that, he was socialized with other black people. And in his rap, in his early days, maybe not now, you would frequently hear him say the N-word. First of all, my project is 90%. I'll give you 80% black, still. My grandmother's projects is 99.9% .9 black. Be clear. So I'm Spanish, I knew I was Latino, but the whole time I thought I was black anyway. The minute I'm walking, the guys from the building's like, yo, look at that little yo, with little fat yo, with this. That's all I knew my whole life, mm -hmm. before even elementary. Then high school, then junior high, I guess they don't understand where I come from, mm -hmm. where I was born or how I was raised or how I lived my whole entire life. Because to the people it is that he hung out with, that he socialized with, that he was within the community of, it was never really frowned upon or looked at as bad. And obviously now times have changed and that's not the way it is that they choose to conduct themselves. However, being socialized within a black community as a non-black is gonna have the effects of you picking up dialects and lingo from that community. So then I started searching. 
I started searching, first of all, if Bratman Rock had ever done any kind of collaborations with black people on his channel, through social media, have I seen him take a photo? And I swear down, and this is not me being shady for the sake of being shady, because you're gonna see how this whole story takes a massive turn for me. I've not seen him with another black content creator at all now correct me if i'm wrong if you guys can find a photo let me know but i have not seen him collaborate with a black person or and even outside of collaboration just photographed with another black person ever so that leads me to believe that even if bretman was socialized amongst black people to begin with he isn't being socialized or culturalized around black people now so then i started taking a look at bretman rock and his history he grew up in the Philippines, left when he was approximately seven to eight years old, moved over to Hawaii. He went to a school where the student body diversity count actually showed that the school had 90.7% of minority enrollment to the school. However, the minority enrollment demographic for his particular school is 9.3% of those kids were white, 44.4% were Asian, 20.1% were native Hawaiian slash a Pacific Islander, as well as 13.3% Hispanic, 9.8% of two or more races, and only 2.8% of black. Meaning that there was absolutely no way for him to have been culturalized around black people because he just simply didn't go to a school that had that demographic. But then that led me to a completely different place of cultural appropriation, versus cultural assimilation. Now, this is where things began to get murky for me, so let's get into it. Okay, so for all intents and purposes, Brett Maroc is a displaced non-black. He grew up in the Philippines and he swiftly moved around the age of seven to eight to Hawaii. We know this. But then it started making me think about his upbringing when he spoke in an interview about the fact that his view and perception of Western society was extremely limited. He would watch VHS tapes of David Bowie and Prince. So that kind of helped aid his gender fluidity and the way it is that he presents himself online and in person. Take a look. My fashion sense is honestly comes from like my dad being so comfortable in his own skin as well. Like he was just this very masculine bro, but also like didn't give a fuck if he was wearing like my mom's like floral shirts all the time. Like right. that's what I grew up in. And he also introduced me. He was also like a rock star. He, he thought it was, he was a fucking rock star growing <laughs> up. And so he, we just had so many pirated queen dvds of just like freddie mercury like singing and, and we didn't have that much electricity but when we did um the electricity that would work um were like our dvd players so that's where we could only play stuff and so i just grew up watching so many like music videos from queens and kiss and um prince even and mm. so i saw what they were wearing and i was like oh my god yeah <laughs> and like those were like 70s 80s icons you know and they were wearing like women's clothes makeup yeah and i was like what happened in the 30 years because that was like celebrated in the 70s yes. and like and then like now in like the 2000s like why can't i do that like what happened in our society you know and so i guess my fashion sense really just comes from like all of like these people that i watched like like growing up who were just like me, like that wore women's clothes. And like at the time, like I was a kid, so I didn't know if they were gay or not. So, yeah. but I just knew they were wearing women's clothes. because I know women's clothes when I see one. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, I think a lot of my influences is with my style today is what I saw growing up and what my dad fed me growing up. If Bretman wasn't socialized around black people, then how did he develop this way in which he speaks? Is it gay slang or drag slang? Or is this just a simple case of racial appropriation versus racial assimilation? 
we have to remember that Bretner and Rock literally had to develop a whole new way of life when he moved from the Philippines to Hawaii at age seven slash eight. And if his only depiction of Western society with the videos that he saw on his VHS tape. It's not crazy or wild to me to think that maybe Bretman Rock just had to assimilate in order to navigate this new world that he's in. And that brought me into my own life. So a lot of people seem to be extremely confused about myself and my upbringing. So just to make it very clear to you, I was born in the West Midlands and I grew up in Cardiff in South Wales. Now, because I grew up in South Wales, I had to assimilate another culture in order for me to survive in this new climate. I started speaking with a Welsh accent. I picked up Welsh words that I would speak to other people in high school and in college and stuff like that. And although I myself was not born and raised in Wales, I acted in a manner that would make people believe that I was. And when I would tell people whilst living in Cardiff that I am not from Wales, I'm actually from the Midlands, they were extremely surprised because I didn't sound like that, I sounded like them. And it's because I picked up this manner of speaking in order to assimilate this culture so that I could survive. Essentially, it was a surviving mechanism. So I can understand how in order to survive from being so displaced from where they're originally from, that Bretman Rock would assimilate, even if it's not the culture it is that he's adapting to, but a culture that's recognizable by his peers, so that he could survive in this new climate. And with that, we have to talk about the privilege of learning about racism. One of the things it is that I get picked apart on, especially on social media, is the fact that I seem to be extremely lenient towards quote unquote white people. Because instead of going on the attack all the time, I will take the time to educate individuals on their own privileges as well as just educating individuals about worlds and demographics outside of their own. And I think that when you are a black individual who has also had the privilege of growing up amongst other black people who aren't your family for the predominant part of your life, you also have this inherent privilege of not socializing with people outside of your own culture and demographic. I, for one, as a black person who grew up in a predominantly white area my entire life, didn't have the privilege of not associating with white folk. I had to, otherwise there was no socialization for me. So in those spaces and navigating those spaces, I took the approach of educating, rather than condemning people. Because I also understand the ignorance of not being socialized or culturalized around people outside of your demographic and the impact that that can have on your worldviews. I mean, shit, if you've never met black people or hung out with black people and your only socialization of what black people are and what they represent in this world and their contributions to society is what you see on mainstream media and TV, I could also understand understand why you would take an apprehensive approach every time a black person was around. It doesn't mean that it's right, it just means that you have an ignorant bias. And we all have ignorant biases towards various different minority communities. One of my best friends is native and I have never met a native person outside of my best friend because in England, there's just not that many native people. So I'm now learning about native culture from my native friend. However, in the case of Brett Rock, is it possible that he knew he was going to be entering Hawaii as a minority and adapted a minority perspective in order to survive? I just think that that's a reasonable question to ask because not everybody shares the African-American experience and not everybody shares the westernized American experience. Anyway, when it comes to the privilege of knowing and understanding racism, anti-blackness, colorism, and all of that kind of stuff, we acknowledge that the limited amount of socialization with the black community that Bretman would have experienced in the Philippines could have conditioned him in a way to a point where it's like, well, he didn't know, like how was he supposed to know? He didn't know. But the problem is, is that now 
he there is no way he doesn't know the voices of poc and black people from america is very loud and clear so now it's a case of essentially going back to the drawing board of where we began of him speaking about the lack of accountability within the beauty space but also the lack of accountability when it's thrown in his face the fact that people don't think that this is acceptable and why don't people accept him using Gabonics and AAVA? Is because he's profited from it. So let's talk about profiting from black. From Aquafina's role in Crazy Rich Asians to the countless variations of the angry black woman trope or the sassy black woman trope being displayed on Instagram, TikTok, and even Vine back in the day. There are numerous different celebrities and people of interest who have been profiting from a more pronounced black scent. And I can't negate the fact that there is a surprising number of these individuals coming from Asian descent. Bitch, I know my motherfucking rabbit just don't give me no bum ass little Uzi bird. Hold on. Let me see this shit. I better get back. Boy, you know I came and wrapped that shit. You bitches trying me right now. Now I could take you down the longer and lengthy road of Asia's history of colorism. But to bring the point back, it's mostly about non-black people wearing blackness as a costume with the ability to take it off as and when they please. Even in other interviews I've seen from Bretman Rock, he speaks about the fact that people have this perception of his persona and the way it is that he's going to act when he's with them. When the reality of the person that he is, isn't this flamboyant and over-exaggerative version of himself. That is a persona. He acknowledges that Bretman Rock, the character we've seen for the past, God, like six years or seven at this point, is a persona. What people expect when they meet me is like someone who's very like, just like bitch this, bitch that. Mm. I think people always expect me to be over the top. And I think people get shocked when I'm a little bit more like, easy going but still kind of like Bretman Rock is still mm. on I think my favorite rumor about me would be the fact that I'm super like high energy all the time uh, I think because people get shocked when I'm actually like pretty chill I'm like y'all can't read between the lines I'm a stoner <laughs> like yeah I'm gonna be chill yeah yeah because people are always like yeah you're you're actually pretty chill and I'm like no, because what did you expect to get? Yeah. Like, it's the actually for me, because what do you mean? <laughs> and that persona has allowed him to get into new spaces, to access a certain kind of wealth that a black woman would have definitely had no access to had they have acted or used the bonics in the same way that Bretman Rock had. And this is the fundamental problem. I feel as a black person, as a black content creator, there have been times in my career where I have either had to lean into the black woman archetype or I've had to present myself in a way that's more palatable. I try my best in my videos to speak clearly and as concisely as I possibly can so that I'm not misunderstood or looked down at as the aggressive black woman. There are so many stereotypes that I have to think of in the back of my mind, even when presenting commentary. And this is something that people who aren't of my demographic will never understand that being a black woman in commentary is vastly different to being a white man in commentary. And for the most part, those are my contemporaries, white men. As a society, we have this strange thing where we boost up you know, non-black people who speak in abonics simply down to the novelty of that person being non-black. When black people live this experience, they eat this experience, they shit this experience, this is their experience. And they aren't commended for it. They aren't having opportunities presented for it. So the problem becomes when somebody can adapt this costume, use it, as and when they want to appropriate or assimilate black culture, give absolutely nothing back to the black community from whence it came and live in success 
for things that black people have been told systematically over the past hundred years that they should try to discard. This part of our lineage, our ebonics, the way it is that we talk to each other, this language that we created, we're supposed to put that to the side, but these people, they're so funny when they say it. So I can understand the upset and I can understand the hurt and the outrage and the anger. But the point is, whether you look at this as cultural appropriation or cultural assimilation, the fact is, is that this person is profiting from something that black people would not. But instead of taking that time to apologize to that community or even acknowledge how his behavior has contributed negatively towards this particular community, he chose not to take accountability. And that is the discussion that I think everybody is negating here. So, Bretman Rock. How are y'all do not even know how to apologize? Hmm? How are y'all do not even know how to apologize? <laughs>